Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Macon Campbell and this is Making Stuff. So this is where the fun starts. Now I get to clean, repair and restore all the parts that I took out in the last two parts of this series. But before we jump into that, I would just like to share with you another resource that I've been using, which has been very helpful. So I mentioned before the Facebook page called uh, Read Organ Tech. Now the founder of this page, uh, or who I'm assuming is the founder of this page, is a guy named Rodney Yancey. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'll put it on screen here. Now Rodney has a website, which is uh, I think RodneyYancey.com. Now I actually discovered his website and his YouTube page, which he also has, um, even before I discovered the Read Organ Tech on Facebook. As most of us do when we need to know something we first turn to YouTube and YouTube is where I found him first. Now he doesn't have a lot of restoration videos on his YouTube channel but he does have a lot of videos of him playing reed organs. But the most helpful part that I found was his website. Now if you look at his website you can pretty much tell that he's been into reed organs for a very long time. And there is a tab for restorations on his website and if you go in there you'll see a whole bunch of organs that he's restored in the past. Now the best part is that most of the organs that he's restored. He has kept kind of a photo journal of the whole process of restoration as well as uh, comments and remarks for each picture and each step taken. Now what I did basically when I got this reed organ is I went on that restoration page on his website and I scanned through there to find an organ that was kind of a similar size and shape as the one that I have. Luckily there was one that was very similar to this, obviously not the same brand. Uh, that one was a Dominion organ. Now going through the pictures initially I wasn't sure how many similarities they would share. Getting to the point where I am right now, it's safe to say that the mechanisms and parts inside uh, that Dominion organ are indeed very, very similar to the ones that I have in this organ. So his website and those pictures have been truly invaluable in this particular project. So if you find yourself wanting to restore a reed organ, I would highly recommend that you go and check out his website. So the first part that I'm going to start with today is going to be the biggest part, and that is the reed pan. And here it is. Now I'm not exactly sure if this whole assembly is called the reed pan or if only this is called the reed pan. But what I have come to notice is that uh, this part, which I'm going to call the reed cell housing or assembly, doesn't look like it's generally separated from this reed pan. Looking at the glue that was used to uh, connect these two pieces, it doesn't look to be the same type of animal hide glue that uh, was used for the rest of the parts. I'm guessing that is because they are not generally supposed to be separated. And in the picture that I saw on Rodney's website um, I also noticed that when he was restoring this piece this part was still intact. Taking all that into consideration I think I'm going to leave this as is and clean and restore this as best I can. Obviously I still have these cracks that I mentioned in previous videos but the idea for fixing that I also took from his website where he took thin slivers of wood that he cut to be the right thickness to fit inside these cracks and he glued them in place and then sanded them down and uh, that seems to be the best way to go about it, which is what I'm going to do. Another thing that I saw on that website as well was how he actually cleaned this reed bed. The one that he did uh, did look quite a bit dirtier than this one, but what he used to clean it was a general purpose surface cleaner. I couldn't find that brand where I live, so I just bought something that seemed to be similar, as well as an abrasive cloth. So I went out this morning and I bought those. Here is my general purpose cleaner that I'm going to use, and here are the abrasive pads. These Oh, seems to be similar to the ones that he was using. So I'm first going to go over this with the blower and a dry cloth just to remove as much dust and dirt as I can before I start the actual cleaning process as well as trying to clean up the glue and some of these material hinges that are still stuck on here. So just before we jump into that there's just a little experiment I would like to try and that is how I'm going to go about cleaning all of these uh, metal parts. I have these couplers, I have these round pins as well as these flat pins which are the pins that the keys ride on and then I also also have these saddles which are what hold these couplers in place. And the idea is to find some kind of solution that I can put these in which will clean them up nicely so that I don't have to go ahead and scrub them each with a toothbrush or with a wire brush or with a wire wheel like I did with some of the other parts. Now I have this stuff. I picked this up at some show that we attended probably like seven years ago 
show here in town. It says that it can clean stoves, ovens, upholstery, clothing, motor engines, carpets and jewelry. At the stall that was selling these, they would call people from the crowd and ask them to give pieces of their jewelry, rings and necklaces and earrings and they would put them in a solution of this with uh, hot water and the jewelry would just magically clean before your very eyes. Now since we bought this like seven years ago, I haven't even tested it. So I don't know if whatever solution they had while they were doing the experiments at the show is even the stuff that's in here. I'm hoping it is. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a try. I'm going to uh, boil up some water. According to this, you only need one teaspoon per one liter of hot water. So I'm going to take a container, fill it with uh, boiling water, add one or two teaspoons of this, and then I'm going to put one of each of these parts in there and let them stand for a while while I get started on the reed pan. And then later today, I'll come back and take them out and see what kind of results I get. So I truly hope that this isn't some kind of acid and when I get back to my solution that it has dissolved all my parts. <laughs> Probably not, but I'm going to give it a try. So I'm going to do that first and then we can get started on the reed pan. Okay, so I'm going to put this off to the side somewhere, get started on that reed pan and we can check back on this a little bit later. Okay, here we go. I'm going to stick on a book or a podcast and jump right in. Here we go, Joe Rogan interviewing Dan Aykroyd. That should be fun. Okay, so I've done quite a bit of sanding and cleaning up here. So the next thing I want to do is get around to figuring out how I'm going to fix these cracks. But before I do that, I've noticed a couple of cracks in the walls of these reed cells. Here's one piece that's uh, broken out completely. Luckily, I found it. So what I'm going to try and do with this one specifically because it's broken out is I'm going to use some normal wood glue and stick that back in place. But these other ones that have cracks developed, uh, I'm just going to pick this up a little bit so that uh, these cracks are kind of vertical and then I'm going to run some super glue 
also known as CA glue, down into these cracks. Hopefully that super glue will fill these cracks up and prevent them from cracking any further or breaking out completely. Okay, so I'm trying to give you as nice a view as I can of this crack over here. You see there's uh, one big one running through here, which ends around here, and then there's another one that carries on here. This one is uh, quite a bit thinner, and then there's another one here. There's one more crack on this side, but that's very thin. I don't think I'm going to do anything with that other than just fill it with uh, like a wood filler or something, which might also be how I end up doing this one, simply because this crack isn't solid. As you can see, it splits off here into a new crack. So to be able to fit a sliver of wood in there, I would have to widen the crack to get a piece of wood in there. This one is fairly wide and it's uh, solid all the way through. This one pretty much as well. I can clean this up and get a piece of wood stuck in there. The crack isn't perfectly straight and it's not 90 degrees to the reed pan either. You can see where it starts over here, it's roughly 90 degrees, but over here it starts twisting up until here. I don't know if that's going to give me any problems, but the only way to know is to uh, just give it a try. I found this little sliver of wood that I had lying around. Not even sure what type of wood it is. It doesn't really matter what it is, it's fairly flexible. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to try and get the general length and width of the piece that I need to fit in here. I'm going to make it a little bit longer than it needs to be. I have to cut it off around there. And then judging by the width of the reed pan, which is roughly 8 millimeters, around here, around here. Let me just mark this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this little piece out. Then I'll start working on the thickness to try and get it to fit in here as nice as I can. Now I don't know how well this fence is going to work because this piece of wood is able to fit underneath this. So I'm just going to cut a little proud of the line and then I'll have to sand it down. bit more finessing on this little piece of wood and I should be able to get it to fit in here. My main problem is the twist in this crack. It's making it exceedingly hard to get this piece of wood in there. And I don't want to sand it down too much. What I also might do is take a strip of sandpaper and stick it through there and then uh, work it up and down here to try and uh, smooth out the crack on the inside. That should also hopefully make it slide in there a bit easier. Okay, so that didn't turn out as well as I'd hoped. Um, it's not a train smash either. And obviously as luck would have it, when I started gluing this in, I forgot to hit record on the camera. So I'm sorry you didn't get to see that. But uh, what happened basically is I put wood on the sliver of wood and I forced it into the crack with another sliver of wood. But in the time that it took me to get the glue inside the crack, the glue on the sliver of wood had already started drying a bit. So I had quite a bit of trouble trying to get this thing pushed in. As luck would have it, I could only get it that far. As you can see, it didn't go all the way into the crack. I'll show you from the other side.
Okay, so seeing as I forgot to record the glue up of repairing that crack, let's hope I can get it right this time. Here is the next sliver of wood. I prepared it exactly the same way as I did that one, cut it to size and sanded it down bit by bit, coming back to fit it as often as possible. Right now, I'm pretty close. That should do it. I think I'm going to take a tiny bit more off because I noticed that the glue adds a bit of thickness and makes it a bit harder for this to go in. So let me do that and then uh, we'll come back and glue it up. Okay, so as I mentioned before, this crack over here is a, a little bit thinner than this one. The one that runs through on this side is even thinner. And then this one over here is the thinnest crack. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do with uh, this one and this one, I'm going to stick some tape to the bottom of the reed pan and then I'm going to run some uh, super glue inside there as I did with the cracks in the reed cells walls, just to prevent the glue from just running through. See if I can fill up the cracks that way. If there's still any gaps at the top, then I'll just fill those. With, uh, with a wood filler. This one I did take a piece of sandpaper and sand it all the way up and down this on both sides like this just to kind of widen up this crack a little bit because I'm going to attempt to fix this one the same way that I did these other two big cracks. As I said this is quite a bit thinner than this one so that means that the piece of wood that I'm going to have to prepare for this crack is going to be really thin. I'm hoping that's going to work. If it doesn't then I'll just revert back to uh, wood filler or something. But uh, because this one is still fairly sizable, I would like to try and fix it with a piece of wood as I think I'll get better results that way. I'm not going to show you the preparation of the piece of wood because uh, you already know how that goes. So I'll see you back here when I have the piece of wood prepared and then we can attempt to glue this one up. Okay, so I've gone between the belt sander and this reed pad about 20 times. And I've gotten this slice of wood down to less than a millimeter at the tip here and uh, roughly a millimeter at the end here. Looks like it's fitting nicely right now. It seems like a really good fit. So let me see if I can get some glue on here and get this crack repaired. Okay, so this crack seems to be a little bit too thick for the plan that I had for it. So uh, what I did is I took a, another piece of wood, sanded it down almost to like a knife edge. So I'm going to softly hammer it in there. Once it's dry, I'll just uh, sand it down again. So I hope that's going to work.
Well, that didn't work exactly as planned, but I think that uh, actually turned out better. And I've got the crack filled in up till here. That part over there I could perhaps just fill with some glue or some other kind of wood filler. So let's carry on. Okay guys, so I may be calling it for this part of the series. Um, I have done quite a bit of work to this reed pan. I have repaired all of the cracks, some a little better than others, but uh, I think they should all hold up. The time has come now for me to start thinking about some of the other materials that I'm going to need to finish this job. I like this material over here, which uh, is supposed to create a airtight seal between this reed pan and the base where it gets attached. Initially I thought I was going to keep it because it looked okay, but uh, I think I'm going to try and replace this. I'm not exactly sure what kind of material this is. Some kind of strange mixture between a felt and paper. So I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I'm going to take this to uh, the place where I found the felt and see if they possibly have anything like this. The other material I need is Something like this, um, which seems to be some kind of book binding tape. I have got this, uh, which does seem similar. I'm going to try this first. I don't know how strong the bond will be. I did notice that um, there are different connection points on the inside here. And it seems that this tape over the top is just basically a seal. That's still something that I'm going to have to contend with. This is just normal felt, so that's not a problem. I've got more than enough of that. The other material that I'm going to need to find is uh, this material, which sits on the back side of the mute, so which creates the seal between the mute and the reed cell. Now this I also have no idea what it is. It seems like some kind of material tape, but uh, with felt on the other side. I'm going to try and find a piece which is fairly intact so that I can take that along and see if I can find this kind of material as well. So, as I said, uh, quite a lot of work has been done already. Um, I'm still going to have to think about a uh, finish for uh, the top of this reed bed. It doesn't look to me like uh, the rest of these parts have finish on them. I don't think they should have finish on them either, so I'll probably just mask off these parts and uh, finish the rest of it. Not exactly sure what kind of finish I'm going to use. From what I've read, it seems that most people use shellac. I've never ever seen shellac in this country. So I'm going to have to do a bit of research and find out uh, what kind of finish is similar to shellac, which I can acquire locally. So with that being said, I will be getting back to this as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them down below. And as always, till next time, keep making stuff.